Welcome back everyone, this is Brian with Faith on Fire. Now in today's video, I'm gonna share an illustration I created and it will demonstrate for you the utter absurdity of Calvinism. Yes, in particular, we're gonna focus on unconditional election. And now let me just define that. Now uh, for Calvinism, unconditional election is the you and tulip, the five points of Calvinism. These are the five main doctrines. Those are the doctrines of grace. It's total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. Now, you, or unconditional election, is the doctrine that they teach is that God, from before the foundation of the world, in other words, before creation even began, God already determined everyone throughout all of history who will be saved and everyone who will not be saved. And that is set in stone. It's done, right? There's nothing that can be done to change it. Free will is an illusion. God has determined all things, and he's chosen the elect, those who will be saved and go to heaven. And he's chosen the non-elect, those who will go to hell. They will become vessels of wrath. They will be reprobates forever. They will be vessels of dishonor. And they will be cast into the lake of fire as their punishment because God determined that is their destiny, predestined to go to hell, right? Now, but for the elect, in accordance with Ephesians 1, verse 3, they are going to receive irresistible grace, come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as a result of that, and they will be given all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places. This great inheritance is going to be bestowed upon them because God loves them and has chosen them, setting them apart from all the rest of the people in the world that he hates because they're reprobates, Right? So God chooses the winners and the losers. That's unconditional election, but it's for the foundation, before the foundation of the world. Now, let's see if that works in real life. If he is the father we would emulate as our perfect and holy and righteous heavenly father, and as fathers on earth that I am, say I'm married, I have two children, right? I'm a father. I, I want to emulate God the father and his love and his kindness, his mercy, his grace, and, and even his discipline. I want to raise my kids right so they come to faith in the Lord Jesus. Well, they already have, but you know, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? So they are in the faith so to speak, and they honor God, they go to church, they have traditional values based upon the Bible and what the Bible says, all those things that I have hopes for in my children. Would I love for them to grow uh, older, have careers and be successful and get married and have children of their own and all the, of course. But you know what I want more than anything? I want them to go to heaven with me. That's what I want more than anything in the world for my children. Now, that's just not the picture of God the Father that the Calvinists have. See, the Calvinists have a picture of God the Father who only wants some to go to heaven, but most everyone else in the world to go to hell. Let's see if that works in real life. Okay, so here we have a, 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 an illustration. We have a married couple, newly married couple. And let me tell you a little bit about their story, okay? So this woman thinks she has scored big time because this guy is awesome. I mean, he is the best guy she's ever met in the world. He doesn't seem to have a flaw about him. I mean... He is perfect, it seems. And she just knows that he would make a good father. And she's looking forward to having children. Matter of fact, it turns out they both are. At the same time, they're thinking, we're married. We should have children. It'd be wonderful. And the husband turns out, he's got a secret, though. He's thought about this a long time ago. He's already thought about this before he even got married. He already knew exactly what kind of children he's going to have and everything. I mean, he has thought it through. And so he takes this moment when they come together and they realize, let's have children. He says, I got news for you. I got it all planned out. So he tells his wife exactly what's going to happen. And here's what he says. He says, guess what? We're going to have five children. And she goes, oh, really? Very specific. And he says, don't worry. Not at the same time. I don't want to kill you. Right? <laughs> but well, ultimately, five children. That's the plan. I already know this. I already thought it through. I already got it. I've already determined it. It's, it's going to happen. Five children. She goes, oh, wow. I always, I wanted a big family. Okay, I'm, all, I'm on board with that. After all, you're such a good husband. I trust you. I'm going to follow your lead. You're, I know you'll be a good father. So I, I, five children, I'm on board. He said, well, three of them will be boys and two of them will be girls. And she said, wow, you're, you, you got that all figured out, huh? Okay. Well, okay, fine. Three boys, two girls. I'm okay with that. That sounds great. He said, oh, look, guess what? I've even got it further planned out. You wouldn't believe it. I even got their names picked out. And she says, you're, you're going to ask me about it? No, no, nah, nah, I got it figured out. Trust me, right? So he says, it's going to be John, Peter, Paul, Mary, and Deborah. Good Bible names. She says, well, you know, I'd like to have a say in that. But, you know, I, I trust you because you're, I know you're going to be such a good father. And you're such a good husband. And, and you, everything you do seems to be right. So I just, I'm just going to trust in you. Good wife, right? 
I'll go with it. Five children, three boys, two girls, John, Peter, Paul, Mary, and Deborah. That will be their names. And he goes, oh, but it's even better. I've got even more of it figured out. And he tells his wife, two of our children, John and Mary, we are going to pour every blessing upon them you can think of. We are going to raise them right. We are going to raise them to be godly children, discipline them when they need it, but they will turn out perfect in every single way because we're going to love them so much. And guess what? One day we're going to die, but we're going to amass a fortune. I got it all figured out. And we're going to give that entire inheritance to just those two children, John and Mary. We're going to bless them with all that we have because we love them. And the wife says, well, wait a second. What about the other three children? Oh, I got that figured out too. See, we're going to hate them. See, we're going to completely reject Peter, Paul, and Deborah because I've already determined it so arbitrarily for just no particular reason, but that's what I'm choosing to do. We're going to actually curse them. We will make sure we withhold all the blessings we possibly can from them. We will raise them to be rebellious. We will raise them to be losers. And in every respect, they will die a complete, utter, lost, rejected nobody. And we will hate them. And why not? After all, they're rebellious, and we'll make sure to it. Well, suddenly the wife is thinking, maybe this guy's not so perfect after all. Maybe this guy is a bit of a monster. And so what started out as a happy married couple, see, they got two smiles on their faces. Suddenly she hears this scenario, and she ain't smiling anymore. And if that were to really happen in real life, I suspect that this married couple would soon be a divorced couple with no kids. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. And that is why unconditional election is utterly ridiculous. And when it comes down to it, Calvinism is basically pagan fatalism. This is where God determines the fate. See, they just merge the pagan view of fatalism, everything set in stone, and they just merge it with biblical concepts. So therefore, they have to have an agent that causes the fates. And so God determines all the fates. It's set in stone. And for this to be carried out, God becomes the agent of both good and evil. So God is the agent of truth and salvation for the elect. But he is also the agent of deception and damnation for all the other people. And so in that scenario that they paint a horrible picture of God's character... There doesn't even seem to be a need for Satan because God's fulfilling both roles of salvation for some, uh, deception and utter damnation for others. And so uh, I, I want to end on one other thing, too. I think it's a good point to say this. Uh, I don't often share uh, too much about who else I listen to on YouTube and so forth, but obviously there's people I love to listen to, and occasionally I'll share a name or two here. But there's one person I really want to take a special moment to shout out because he's such a good brother in the Lord. I love all his teachings, and I watch every one of them, and I want this audience to know about him. And his name is James Lawrence. He is a wonderful teacher. He covers a whole host of topics, including this one of Calvinism, uh, and. I mean, I'd say nearly almost everything I hear him teach, I'm in agreement with. Uh, not, not, not 100%. No two people agree on everything. But if you want to know if there's a particular person, there's, there's more than just James, but there are certain people on YouTube that may not be widely known by a whole lot of people that I watch whatever they do. And, uh, and James, thankfully, because I'm always looking for it, does a lot of videos. He is very good at pumping out. Uh, videos and he's a very solid Bible teacher and I want you to know about him. I'm leaving a link to his channel in the video description below and I think you would be very much blessed to go over and start watching his channel and, sub and subscribe to his channel um, and uh, I appreciate every once in a while he gives me a shout out and he's uh, occasionally leaves a comment on my channel. It's always a blessing to hear from him. It's always encouraging and I, and I want to encourage you as the audience to go find him and start watching his videos, and I know you'll be blessed. Anyway, so that's it. Um, I hope you appreciated this video and learned once again just through practical applications that Calvinism does not work, paints a horrible picture of God the Father, and we need to get that right. We need more and more people standing up for the truth of God's word and his character and the true gospel of Jesus Christ, which saves predestination and unconditional election won't save anyone. That's just a delusion for religious elitists. 
and it's just dead religion. It's false. It's completely false, and it's an infiltration in Christianity. So uh, avoid it. Uh, you know, beware of the teachers who teach it. Understand what it means. It's so important because it's pervasive and it's it's spread its its claws throughout Christianity. These are wolves in sheep's clothing teaching it. Now I will end by saying that there are many good Christians who get sucked into it, indoctrinated into it, sadly get all confused about who Jesus is and who he came to save and how salvation works. And and I believe these are solid Christians who otherwise would be uh, you know, way, way better off and fulfilling the will of God in their life way, way better if they if they just would wake up and realize that they got they got sucked into a um, a specific uh, false religious set of doctrines that shipwreck your faith. They don't get unsaved because of it, mind you. Um, and some of them will end up going out and defending Calvinism and so forth. But they, there's there's a path back onto the truth. God's merciful and kindness is drawing them back through channels like James Lawrence, like mine, like many others. Many are speaking out against this now. And, and I really would encourage you to um, uh, be, be willing to stand up and speak out against Calvinism, but also recognize that there are brothers and sisters in the Lord that are caught up into it knee deep and they need our help and they need to be pointed to the light, the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and the good news of the gospel, which is available to all people. And, and that's what makes it good news, that every sinner can become saved by putting their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm off. Thank you for watching. May the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. Bye-bye.